the plainly racist aims of the terrorist shooter have left many here and across the country wondering, frankly, why the flag is still flying on the grounds of the South Carolina Capitol. Protesters gathered at the State House this weekend demanding its removal. It symbolizes pain. It symbolizes hate. There is not one elected official who's got that flag at their business, in their yard, on a sticker, but they defend it. At least one South Carolina legislator has promised to introduce a bill to take the flag down. A majority of South Carolinians, though, favor keeping the flag flying. One of the individuals, although not a South Carolinian, but a supporter of the flag is here with me. David French, who writes for the National Review, is here uh, to make the case. Also joining me is Bakari Sellers, a Democratic state senator here, who says the flag needs to come down now. Uh, David, first of all, let me say thank you for having the guts to be here. To be completely honest, we reached out to some Republican state legislators, and they would not come here to defend the flag. Explain your position. Well, uh, let me be very clear. Number one, let me just say the most important thing is God bless the victims here yes, today. Yes, absolutely. Their Christian witness of forgiveness is resonating around the country and the world, and I don't want anything we say here to take away from that reality. And I'm not defending the flag broadly. Let me be very clear. My position is if you're flying it, or if the state is flying it as a symbol that African American citizens are not equal to everyone else or should not be equal to everyone else as it was flown during the segregation era as a symbol of massive resistance, take it down. Stomp on it for all I care. If it's flown next to Civil War memorials, next to Civil War monuments, as part of the, uh, the process of teaching the public about our history, as messy as it is, that's part of history. And that's part of learning about why these men, the almost 20,000 South Carolina citizens who fought and died under that banner, why they fought, why that banner has resonance today. It's part of the history of teaching the totality of it. And I really think that by teaching history in its fullness, we can begin to understand our past, understand why we are the way we are, and start to chart a course as to where we should be going and do it better. Bakari? Well, I think that's a, a relatively uh, naive and simple reasoning uh, in looking at the Confederate flag. Because here in South Carolina, uh, the, the soil of our great state is stained red with the blood of so many African Americans. Uh, whether or not it's February 8, 1968, where three students, Henry Smith, Samuel Hammond, and Delano Middleton were killed and 27 others were wounded in what's known as the Orangeburg Massacre. Or whether or not we're talking about a month ago where you had Walter Scott. Or whether or not you're talking about Wednesday night where you had nine people slain. Now, I am under no illusion that the Confederate flag walked in and actually pulled the trigger. Um, but it did give this young man a banner under which to justify his actions. Um, and that banner under which he justified his actions is callous. That banner breeds hate. And for many of us, um, looking at that every day, my good friend Clemente Pinckney is going to be laying in state um, on Wednesday, 30 yards away from that banner, that banner where this young man went back just to find some refuge and, and solace um, in his hateful views. And that's why we sit here today, and that's why we yell, and that's why we scream, um, and that's why we want that thing to come down. All right, let me ask you. Uh, an overwhelming majority of South Carolinians especially white South Carolinians, African-American South Carolinians, completely disagree, but white South Carolinians, which are a majority in the state, support the flag where it is. Why do you think they support the flag where it is? Do you think they are primarily motivated by well, racism or, or by heritage? Well, I think that the premise of the question is a little bit off because you can't generalize all white South Carolinians as such. There are many younger generation people um, who are in my age group, millennials, um, who wanted to come down. Um, whether or not they're business people, whether or not they're elected officials. We just saw uh, Doug Brannon um, come out and he said he's going to file the bill to remove the flag. That's a Republican, state, Republican state legislator. Republican state legislator. So, you know, for me um, and, and my journey and my task um, is to understand that one, since we're at this religious setting, faith without works is dead. And so as we move forward, we have to have faith, but our work has to be to come together um, to remove this symbol of hate. And I believe that we will. And, and, and David, I your argument, and you wrote a very long op-ed for uh, National Review. That I read it, by the way. <laughs> that was it was very well written, and you and you granted a lot of Bakari's points uh, about why people could be offended by it, why many people should be offended by it. Uh, but you still, at the end of the day, think that that it represents to you, and I guess you think to a majority of people who support it, 
heritage, not hate? Well, you know, I, I've grown up in the South, and I, I understand all of the many dimensions that are brought to the view of that flag. And I completely, I, I agree with everything that Bakari just said about its meaning and its import to a huge number of our very dear citizens who are suffering today. And again, I, I hate that this debate is taking place against the backdrop of right. that suffering. But it is viewed in many different ways by many different people. And there is a view of it, and this is one that I tried to articulate in the, in the piece, that said one of the ways that the South went forward after the Civil War, and one of the ways that it went forward in a way where hundreds of thousands of Southerners then went on to fight and die for the Union that they were just fighting against a generation or two before, is that they memorialized the war through the valor and not trying to memorialize it through the injustice. Now, that's not to say they did so perfectly. They did many very bad things that history has, is, is, should be very clear in condemning them for. But one thing they chose to do was not to continue on guerrilla war and to continue to resist, which would have ripped this nation to shreds. Yeah. They chose to remember instead of resist. And that's something that is part of our history as well. David, when you saw the photograph of the terrorist racist who I'm not going to name, when you saw the photograph of him with the Confederate flag, did you think to yourself, oh boy, this flag's going to come down? When I saw that, it was disgusting to me. Uh, you know, look, I'm under no illusions. I I've grown up in the South, I spent most of my life in the South. I know there are, ter there are evil, racist people who use that symbol. And every time I see it like that, it's disgusting. It's horrible. And, and I, I saw that, it makes me sick. I don't have particular affection for that flag. I don't have any affection for that flag. What I want to do is to be able to teach history. At Fort Sumter, uh, on federal land, a Confederate flag usually flies. And that's part of, this is what Fort Sumter was. At Confederate memorials, these things fly, because this is what the banner they fought under. Why was that banner there? What did it mean to them? What does it mean today? That's all part of teaching history. Carl, I'll give you the last word here. Yeah, I, we're having a hard time moving forward, and I, I keep hearing uh, David talk about moving forward, but we're having a very difficult time moving forward. To the fact that my father, who's 70 years old and I'm 30 years old, and the many members of SNCC and SCLC and all those people and all those heroes and sheroes whose shoulders I stand upon, we're having shared experiences. Um, David, I'm tired of burying people that I love, and that's very difficult. And that flag is really representing things that are really hard to live by. All right, well, I thank you both for the civil discourse on a very, very emotional issue.